I thought I'd introduce you to Ted. <laughs> this is Snoops. He's been with the family for 15 years. Uh, didn't have a clue really what a, a TED talk was. So um, he's going to help me out while we do it together. That's a minute gone, isn't it? Hey, oh, crumbs. Back in 2007, Greg Grussell, the, the founder of Life Church TV, was asked to speak at the uh, Global Leadership Summit, the Willow Creek, Creek uh, uh, a conference in Chicago. And he, he took the subject of it, IT, it. And he began his talk by saying, some ministries have it, some don't. Most churches want it, few have it. When a church has it, everyone can tell. And when one doesn't, everyone can tell. It is always powerful. It is always life-changing. And he, he, he makes his way through and he, 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 he begins to expound what it is. And he, he doesn't explain it fully, but he says somewhere along the line, the Holy Spirit is involved. But he does say this, this is what I know. If you've ever been part of a ministry that had it, you knew you were part of something special. In other words, you knew it, you saw it, and it was an awesome work of God that couldn't be contained, couldn't be harnessed, and couldn't be explained. Anybody know something of it? I love it. And I love uh, this statement that, that Grishel makes because this statement captures uh, the experience of the church, not just my church, but the churches in Carmarthen over the last 14 to 15 months as a result of leading our churches in mission. We've known something of it. We've seen something of it. And that it continues. One of the overwhelming reasons we, we know, uh, we have known uh, the it in is that sense of ownership as a church leadership. We've seen it, we continue to, to, uh, to, to see it work out amongst us because we own it. Ownership of leading your church through mission is vital. And the one thing I want you to, to go away with today is that, that sense of you, that, that needing to own it. The senior leader or leaders of the church need to be actively involved in modeling something of mission to the church, of patterning something, of being an example, of being a role model. And when it, that does, uh, when that happens, it creates momentum and momentum is really important. Some of the it that we have experienced and are experiencing in Carmarthen is the result of the senior church leaders in the town being wholeheartedly engaging in mission. You know, nobody, nobody stepped back last year. We all got engaged. We weren't just e equipping the saints, but we were working with the saints. We were participating with the saints, not leaving it to someone else, not uh, uh, leaving it to someone else in the church, not picking, oh, is, does this suit me or not, or fulfilling my, my agenda. We were actively demonstrating an all-in attitude. So when we went on the streets, when we prayed for nearly 700 people in five days, when we, when we went and we, we prayed a blessing, we laid hands on them, when have we ever done that? When we went and, and did that, the senior leadership and their leadership teams were standing along the side of the church as they did it. When we, and we estimate that we spoke to almost 2,000 people that God loves them and has an awesome plan for their life, that's 10% of Carmarthen. And when we get that, when, when, when we did that, the senior leaders and the leadership teams were alongside the church. And when they, when we go again, when we go for it in a couple of weeks' time, we, we know that the, the senior leadership teams and the senior leaders are going to be there. And ownership is vital. Ownership is incredible. When I was asked to, 
to be part of the mission last year of my church, Bethel Church, when we were asked to be part of the mission to Wales, I could have easily have said, you know, oh, you know what, we're, we're too busy, and we are busy. We, we, we've, we, we, we've got the, uh, the calendar full. We, 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 it's just another thing to, to get planned. It's, uh, you know, we, we're going to tie ourselves out. We're going to burn ourselves out. I could have said, no, this is not the time. We could have said that uh, actually we'll wait and see what the response is. We could have, we could have done that. We could have, uh, I knew I would have opposition of, of taking, leading the church in, in mission. I knew that some of my leaders would, would uh, uh, not see it in, in, in a theological way of, of doing the, 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 uh, the, the pattern of the mission. And uh, subsequently, when we signed up, when we went with it, I had leaders leave. I had people in the church leave. But the real big issue was not, not whether we were busy, not whether I was frightened of how people would react. The biggest issue was me. The biggest issue was, was me. I really didn't want to get involved in the mission. It wasn't my style of mission. You know, it wasn't, uh, I'd had experience on the streets and it wasn't good. I, I've been one of the crowd that have shouted at people and uh, it wasn't good. And, 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 and here I was agreeing with, with, with signing up for the mission and hoping that people in my church would die that week so I wouldn't have to be there. Listen, we've all fought it. <laughs> but ultimately, I knew if I was going to lead the church in mission, I had to commit myself as a senior leader. I had to say, I'm all in, I'm all behind this, I'm committed to this, and prepare the church for it. And my, my personal preference, it was, was secondary. And I have, yes, I, I guess we've all had questions over the mission, whether it was right to get involved on, or, or, or the way it was done. But you know what? My prayer was, Lord, if you're in this, I don't want to miss it. God, if you're in this, I don't want to miss it. A defining moment for me was when I came to Swansea as part of the pilot. I had to deal, get over some fears myself. And I, 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 I signed up to come down on the Friday. And there we were in this room having worship in the morning. And I was crying out to God, 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 help me in this. You know, Jesus, if you're going to come, please come now before I go on the street. And I was paired, I was paired up with, a, with a, um, uh, a, a charismatic Catholic called Rosie. Can you imagine well, it's, you know, what Swansea was in for? They were, there, I, there, I, there we were, a charismatic Catholic and a Pentecostal. And uh, wow, it, it, things were go, going to happen. And we, we went out on the streets and we've all seen it, the remarkable work of God, the undeniable work of God. Listen, let's not forget what happened last year. Let's remember what happened. And uh, there we were, Rosie was just bonkers. She was just, uh, you know, she was going everywhere. She was just uh, touching people. She was just talking to people and people were responding. And I was there and I hated every minute of it. <laughs> I was looking at my watch and thinking, Lord, have you stopped the time again? You know, time went so good. I was so pleased to get back to the church. And we got back to the church and saw over some great, or heard some great testimonies. But the key moment for me was that afternoon when I was back in Carmarthen. And I was back in, in, in my study and I was sitting there and I didn't enjoy the experience. I didn't enjoy being on the streets. And, you know, people didn't punch me, thank God for that. People didn't swear at me, thank God for that. But I, I just didn't enjoy it. But I, as I sat in my study... With those emotions, I had another emotion, an overwhelming desire to do it again. And when, 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 when that began, when that surfaced, I was just amazed. And it was a defining moment because the thought, of me, the thought came to me, if I feel like this, imagine what a church, a, a people would, would feel like if, this was, if, this, if they felt like this. How healthy would this be for the church if they're fired up for mission? How incredible would it be for the town if people were feeling like this? 
And for me, you know, we, we, we signed up to the, the mission and it was an amazing time of, of unity amongst the churches. Something which we can, uh, we just got to build on. We cannot go back to where, the way it was. And we, we've, we've just seen that as we've started our, our, our prayer, prayer together. We weren't just hanging back. We were straight in there, just, just praying. But the best thing for me of leading uh, a church in mission has been very much giving people the opportunity and the confidence to share their faith. You know, people in our churches don't know how to share their faith. People in our churches don't know how to disciple. And we're one of the benefits that we've, the great benefits that we have found as a church, that we have given people the confidence. But for me, the overwhelming excitement and joy has been looking at the people's faces as they have, as they have shared their testimonies at the end uh, of uh, the day on mission. Stories that could have been missed if I had chosen to go with my own personal preference. Stories that they would have missed that has helped them grow and develop in their, in their faith. Stories like Ruth. Ruth is here today. 71 years of age. For 50 years, she had never led anyone for Christ. But the room erupted when she said, you know, today she led someone to Christ. And she didn't just read one, she read five. <laughs> Stories like Miriam. Miriam's an 18-year-old girl, very quiet. And she was out on the street and she met a, a, a woman um, from a Welsh chapel background in chapel every, every week and yet not knowing the, the saving power of Jesus Christ. And Miriam at 18, quiet and, and it, it just you wouldn't recognize, you wouldn't know she was in the room even. There she was sharing with us that she led that woman to Christ. And her face was beaming. That's a real challenge for us, for people's stories. The challenge for us as leaders is not to let the, the church miss, miss those opportunities of adventures with God. John Maxwell says this, the task of the leader is to get their people from where they are to where they have not been. I don't know about you and what your view was about the mission, but for us in the the, the, the church in Carmarthen, it was very special. It was incredibly special. And it created, and it has created an it. And that it is momentum. And momentum is, is contagious. Momentum draws people. People know if you've got momentum or not. People know, know if uh, uh, you are, you uh, are, just in that place of uh, the, the favor and blessing of God, and when you're not. Brian Houston says this, momentum is a friend to every, Christ, every leader who is consumed with the cause of Christ and his church. Conversely, a lack of momentum is the catalyst of great frustration and duress, and often produces striving or disillusionment, neither of which will ever lead to momentum. As a result of this season of momentum, we continue to see growth within the Carmarthen churches. We continue to see our people grow spiritually. We continue to see our churches grow numerically. We, we, we have seen an increase on visitors uh, come in to our churches. We, have, we hear that the people are, are more confident in sharing their faith on a daily basis. We're, we're bringing, we, they're bringing more and more people to church. We're seeing, we've had more saved this year than we have ever had. You know, it's just the atmosphere of change. We sing about it, the atmosphere of, of, the, of, of, of uh, the, the whole town has, has changed. We've seen uh, family events and, and messy church. We've seen people that we have worked with for, for six, five or six years and seem to not go anywhere. We've seen them cross over into mainstream church this year. It's just it, quite incredible. One of my favorite stories of the mission is, is uh, um, we, we've been journeying with, with a family for a number of uh, years. And uh, uh, on the Saturday, on the Monday of the mission, I led 
I read Byron to the Lord. On Tuesday, Karen, my wife, led his wife Claire to the Lord. On Wednesday, Claire's father on the streets was led to the Lord. On Thursday, Claire's mum was, Claire's mum, um, was led to the Lord on the streets. Just incredible. And Claire and, Claire and Byron, you know, we've, they, we've, they've stuck with us. I've baptized Byron. I baptized uh, Claire on Sunday. And uh, we've just had that opportunity of just seeing them grow and develop and be hungry for the word of God. And it's just amazing. But uh, Jackie and Michael, the mum and dad, we, haven't, we didn't see them. They didn't want follow-up. And then Byron gets baptized and Michael and Jackie come. And they come to the service and they cry. It, not because the meeting's bad, but they cry. You know, they, they, they're just overwhelmed by the, the, the work of the Spirit there. And uh, they come the next Sunday. And they come the next Sunday. And on the 29th of April, there they are standing saying, we want Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You know, when we, say, when we, when we throw some seed, you never know. You know, it's God's timing. You know, so the, you know, you, we, yeah, we haven't seen our churches bursting, but you never know wh- how, where that seed lands. We gave out some hampers at Christmas and uh, we went to one uh, house and uh, we had a card back saying, thank you for the hamper. Oh, by the way, somebody prayed for me on the streets in July on, in Carmarthen. I just want to say to you, I'm still trusting Jesus. You never know. So how am I doing? I'm done. One minute. Okay. Okay. So leaders, I really want to challenge you. Lead your church in mission. Today, I, as we have all day, I've just had a, a, a little phrase from, you know, we, we, we apply it to, to Moses. But I want to say it to you as leaders. I believe the Lord would say to you, let my people go. Let my people go. Let them have the opportunity to make some stories, to tell some stories. You know, sometimes we, we just, we just uh, want our own preference and it doesn't fit in with anything that, that we, we're doing. But let me tell you, let's get the people grow and make some history. If we're going to change a nation, we've got to let our people go. Amen. Amen. <laughs>